What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right, so um, I was talking to one of my um, subscribers right today. When I say talking, I mean communicating, and he made an excellent point. It's something that we've always mentioned. But I don't know if I've ever really made a video talking about this specific point. And that is that all of the great players have had to deal with criticism. All of them. It comes with the job of being a leader. But yet for some reason the man on the right is exempt from criticism by the media. He claims to be the best player ever. But yet, unlike every other leader or best player or best anything, he points to subordinates to blame. And his fan base does even more, uh, you know, even more uh, vigorously than he does. They point to others to blame when things go wrong. As we see right now, the Lakers, who some people thought would be a championship team, I knew that would be nothing. I knew that was that was cap. And a team that just, what, two weeks ago won this meaningless uh, tournament title, tournament, whatever the crap it was, right? Now, all of a sudden, they lose two in a row. I think they're 17 and 17 on the year. And Lakers, we're well, really, really LeBron fans, are clamoring for Darvin Hand to be fired. How about some of the blame be put on the fact that LeBron, at age 39, is a bad, def is, is become a bad defender or a lazy defender? Sure, at times when he musters up enough energy, he'll have a chase down block or something like that. Or yeah, but most of the times nowadays, LeBron is perched in the paint, standing like a damn velociraptor, waiting for that rebound. I don't know why the officials don't call three second violation on legal defense. On LeBron or the Lakers, I don't get it. But anyway, you can't criticize him. He has a bad shoot tonight. He goes one for 12, eight turnovers. It's, it's the team. It's never him. Kobe Bryant embraced criticism. He embraced it. Because criticism only made him try harder, work harder, and be better. I instantly think about the 2008 uh, Olympics in Beijing, right? The Redeem Team. And that story about how LeBron, in his passive-aggressive way, told Mike Krzyzewski, hey, talk to Kobe. He's messing up the offense. He's taking hero shots. And we don't need that from him, right? But, of course, when he passes by Kobe, he cheeses and carries you know, meaningless conversation and doesn't show his true feelings in the passive-aggressive feminine manner that he does. When Mike Krzyzewski went to Kobe and told him about the criticisms, Kobe probably knew where it was coming from. But he didn't start any beef. He said, okay, I'm going to stop doing that. Thank you for sharing that with me. If it was constructive criticism, Kobe knew that was meant for it was meant in a way to make him better. Remember, this is the same guy who, as a rookie, airball two. What was it? Three consecutive airballs from outside against the Jazz in the playoffs. That would have destroyed a lot of players back then. Rookie, eighteen years old. They would have destroyed a lot of young players. 
That just made him try harder. It made him try harder. Magic Johnson had a, by his standards, a very below, uh, a very subpar 1984 NBA Finals. To the point where the, where the media, which had been pretty much pro Magic Johnson's entire career, turned on him and started calling him Tragic Johnson. Magic didn't sulk and cry and complain about it. He used that as motivation to get better and come back stronger. In 85, the Lakers did something they never did before, ever, at the time. And that was beat the Boston Celtics in the playoff series. Michael Jordan got criticized. Scoring t- a scoring champion can't win titles. He don't have a jump shot. You know, uh, the NBA favors him. He gets all these calls, etc., etc., etc. Allen Iverson. You know, all of them. They all got criticized. Will Chamberlain. Kareem. Shaq. He's lazy. He can't shoot free throws. Shaq will even admit to these weaknesses. But for some reason, this guy, if you criticize him in any way, shape, or form, his fan base will damn near want to form a, a, a lynch mob for you. It's crazy. It's crazy. But you know, that's what separates him from the other real all-time greats. And that is that those guys, the real all-time greats, they knew what criticism was about and what it meant. They were also leaders. They didn't shy away from taking, they didn't shy away from taking the blame when it was on them. You know what I'm saying? Not point fingers to others or subliminally take shots at the coach or what have you. That's the real definition of a, of a leader and a great player. And that should be part of the determination of when ranking players as well, not just stats. It's not about just stats and numbers. Anyway, that's all I got to say about it. Tell me what you guys think.